Arnold. Today, he's working as a delivery man. Come on faster, Arnold, before the kebab gets cold. Just remember to always smile and you might get tipped. What interesting people live here. I'm guessing they are watchmakers. Oh. It looks like you're gonna get a big tip. Mm. Wait, what's that? Arnold, something tells me you're in some seriously deep doo-doo. I was right, Arnold. This is bad. Those guys aren't watchmakers. They're <gasps> terrorists. And since you gave food to the terrorists, mm. now you're one of them. And you've been sent to a place from which nobody has ever what? escaped. Guantanamo Bay Prison. Arnold, didn't you hear me? Nobody has ever managed to escape from here. They don't even try because it's impossible. And if anyone even dares to try to escape, he'll have to find a way to get through 20 centimeter thick metal doors down an endless maze of corridors with surveillance cameras, fight off vicious guard dogs, get over super high voltage, five meter tall electric fences, through razor sharp concertina wire and past dozens of guards in every sector. At the moment, 40 of the most dangerous criminals in the world are held at this prison. And you, my friend Arnold, are on the list. Congratulations. Nevertheless, you're not allowed to talk to any of them. After all, every prisoner is in strict solitary confinement 24 hours a day. Speaking of time, it's time to have lunch. Let's see what's on the menu for today. All right, what do we have here? They only have one special prison dish, something called Nutriloaf. Nutriloaf is a prison punishment food made from leftovers without the slightest hint of salt or spices. <laughs> Good Lord, that makes me want to barf. I have no idea how you're going to eat it, Arnold. So you're not gonna eat it. You decided to go on a hunger strike as a sign of protest. Oh, and look, how cute. You made a little dolly friend out of bread to keep you company. Well done, Arnold. But I think you overreacted about the food. I completely forgot to tell you, but Guantanamo Bay is not a place where human rights are given a whole lot of thought. So, if someone goes on a hunger strike, for example, he's force-fed with a tube that's pushed up one of his nostrils. Okay, so this plan doesn't always work. But don't think for a minute that this is over. A whole smorgasbord of tortures are waiting for you. Water, cold, music, and electric torture are all being practiced in Guantanamo. And the cherry on top is sleep deprivation. After just a few days of such torture, your brain and muscle functions weaken, your thinking processes and your will can now easily be broken. After a week, due to lack of sleep, you'll start hallucinating. As a result of which, Arnold, Hey, the poor guy. Do you want some advice? Keep calm. The deeper you breathe, the more you spend oxygen, which you have enough for one to two hours. Try to breathe deeply and exhale slowly. This will help prolong your life, which is not needed by anyone. It's easy to break through the lid in cheap coffins. Such bad guys like you will be buried in these coffins. Remember what Peimei taught you. Well, or take the brass knuckles that your friends put in the coffin and hit the center. Cover your face with clothes so that the ground does not block your airway and start ramming the ground around yourself. When the place inside the coffin is finished, try to sit down. You did? Wow, we didn't believe in you the way your parents did. Now, try to crawl upwards, wriggling like a worm. Arnold, did you get out? It's incredible. I hope that no one thinks that you're a zombie. God, Arnold, you are such a loser that we have to pay twice for your funeral. All of this just for the donuts. Oh, you bastard. Well, no worries. Today, you'll have a chance to do a really good deed. The whole planet is infected with diarrhea virus from China. But I made your blood the only existing vaccine. There are 7 billion people in the world, and everyone is hunting for you. 
195 countries have posted your photo on all possible media. You're in all of the police databases, and not only the world's police, but all the best special forces in the world are after you. MI6, British Intelligence, which has been working around the clock for 100 years straight. ISI, Pakistan's Interdepartmental Intelligence Agency, with the largest residency in the world, 10,000 agents. The CIA, watch out Arnie, they torture people. The Canadian Intelligence Service, with a search budget of over $507 million. Do you really think you can hide from all of them? You're on every single smartphone in social media. You become more popular than Greta Thunberg. I'm sure she envies you now. After all, you can actually help save humanity. Just give them your blood, all the way down to the last drop. Elite special forces from all countries are already coming for you. U.S. Navy SEALs, the French National Gendarmerie, Chinese Snow Leopards. But of course, even a random student could catch you. Big Brother is watching you. In New York City alone, there are about 20,000 surveillance cameras. They take photos, compare the distance between the main features on your face, nose, eyes, mouth. Data is converted into a person's numeric code, a face print, and verified with the database. Catch this, these glasses with built-in infrared LEDs will help oh. you to hide your face from the cameras. For them, hey. your face will look like a glowing hey. blind spot. Wait a bit, you forgot the battery. This isn't enough, you need a disguise. It was a bad idea to eat this many donuts. They provoked an excessive accumulation of gases. Unleash the winds! You look good, but search dogs will find you by the smell of butyric acid, the odorous component of your sweat. It won't help that just one gram of sweat is enough for the dog to smell you on the roof of that 10-story building or at a depth of 15 feet under concrete. In the United States alone, there are nearly 7 million drones. Stop waving and take this special weapon against drones. This gun fires a wide stream of electromagnetic emissions so you don't have to aim. It's enough for the interference stream to cover the drone, and then it'll lose contact with its base and lose control. What have you done? Get lost in the crowd, bone brain! Well, you have to kiss. Whoops, we have a small problem. Arnold, don't be scared, but you are buried alive. Just like Rodrigo Cortez. <laughs> uh. Stop yelling already. Screaming increases panic, heart, and accordingly the amount of air you use. And you have a maximum of two hours of breathing in your coffin until you run out of oxygen. Arnold, your phone, you're only two meters deep. Hooray, there's one line of connection. Call your loved ones, they'll save you. But this isn't certain because for them, you're dead. They'll probably think your call is someone's stupid hmm. prank. Try to connect to the internet. Your post will be seen for sure, but only after they like a cat in a funny suit, a new post by Ariana Grande, and a funny shaped potato. I have it. Geotag posts get 79% more engagement, and a post that says oil was found will 100% attract the attention of Donald Trump. In critical situations, a person's animal instincts wake up. Well, I expected that it would wake up in you. Arnold, when lacking oxygen, people often see hallucinations. Maybe we can Google what to do. Don't hammer a nail in your life like it's a coffin lid. Get out of your comfort zone. There's no way. Oh, kill Bill too. Do it like Uma Thurman. You need to punch a hole in the lid. Be strong in spirit. Collect all your anger like Naruto. Ooh, did it hurt? You need to somehow break the lid. Look if you have anything in your pockets. Ew, Arnold, what is that? Oh, give me a break. You won't even need them outside the coffin. Ooh, this will do. Breakthrough. Hit. It's like you're trying to escape from fascists or from the whining songs of Billie Eilish. You did it. Now you have to tamp all the dirt into the coffin to clear your way out. You have to lift your shirt so that it can be tied over your head. 
This is so that you don't suffocate from dirt falling on your head. Arnold! 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 Wake up! Hallucinations again. It's way easier for a person to get from out of a depth if it's equal or less than their height. But since we have two meters here, you should try to crawl up like a worm. Arnold, you're almost there. Hey. Congratulations, you're alive. You scared us. Don't die like that again. Congratulations, Arnold. You just volunteered for the bulletproof skin test. Wow. You still alive, Superman? So, a successful test. Hey, Arnie, these guys seem pretty happy with the outcome, but they want to up the ante. A grenade launcher fires a grenade from its barrel at a speed of 120 meters per second, and it can pierce 50 centimeters of steel armor. Now we need something more serious. For example, skin made from fullerene. This is the strongest material known to science, an allotrope of carbon, and it's 200 times stronger than the strongest steel. Congratulations, Arnie! Your fullerene skin can withstand a rocket-propelled grenade, which, of course, cannot be said about your brain. The shockwave has turned it into jiggly jelly. But luckily, you're in a super-secret lab. That's right, Arnold! Perfect time to get away! After all, now automatic weapons can't hurt you. In fact, you can't be strangled, and even getting hit by a car won't hurt you. But your strength, Arnie, you little wimp, that hasn't changed a bit. But instead, as I can see, now you've got nerves of steel. But the problem is, Arnold, now you have to hide for the rest of your life so that no one knows that you've got super skin. Wait, what? I see, Arnie. You'll do anything for likes. Well, each his own. Anyway, make sure that stubborn streak of yours doesn't go sideways on you. Even Superman has weaknesses. Did you really think no weapon could get through that skin of yours? The magician Harry Houdini got out of being buried alive with his hands tied. I think you know what I'm getting at, Arnie. Today, we're gonna bury you alive for the third time. And since people have seen you perform this trick a bunch of times already, you're gonna do it in a special way this time. We're gonna handcuff you. And the coffin's gonna be made out of metal. Okay, Arnie, buddy, ready? Get in. During past burials, you already learned the most important rule. You need to breathe calmly and deeply in order to conserve your oxygen. Okay, now quit being calm. We need to get the handcuffs off. It's really simple. All you need to do is break one finger on each hand so you can slip them through the cuffs. Oh, quit your belly aching, Arnie. You still got two more fingers left. Use your belt or watch to try to crack open the lid. A metal coffin has weak points all along the edges. Come on, Arnie, I was kidding. You can't break through the metal, doofus. There's two meters of earth above you, which is pressing down with a mass of almost two and a half tons. So this third burial will probably be your last. Arnie, Arnie. Arnie, where are you? Oh, you little bastard. Yes, you really are Arnie Houdini. In just the same way, Harry Houdini climbed through a secret compartment in the sidewall of the coffin and into a tunnel. And then through a hatch in the grave, he dropped down on the coffin from above and covered himself with a half meter layer of dirt. But where's the hatch, Arnie? Surprise! You didn't really think I'd let you out so easy, did you? Swim up, Arnold, before the concrete sets. Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. The concrete solution, when interacting with water, forms alkaline molecules. And because there's a lot of moisture in your skin, then, well, it's gonna hurt. Congratulations, Arnold. You did it. You managed to attract attention to yourself. Revel in the glory. Don't move! It looks like that's an inland taipan. Hey, 
big dumbass. That's the most venomous land snake on Earth. The Taipan's venom is 180 times more toxic than a cobra's. A drop the size of a pinhead can kill 1,000 rats. And 44 milligrams of this venom, which the snake injects in a single bite, can kill over 100 Arnold's. Running is useless. The Taipan does not slink away after the first bite like other snakes, but continues with a series of lightning-fast, super-precise attacks to finish off the victim. These 13-millimeter-long fangs just injected a powerful hematoxin into your blood that prevents it from clotting. This leads to internal bleeding. You lose control of your body. Your limbs stop obeying. Breathing becomes difficult, and convulsions begin soon after. Oh, don't worry, Arnold, that's not blood. That's urine. Your muscle cells literally begin to dissolve and leave through your kidneys. Due to this, your urine becomes red. If you don't take an antidote within 30 minutes, then for the next eight hours, during what's left of your worthless life, you will experience hellish pain that will make you beg to be finished off sooner. The first part of the simulation is complete. And one more breath. Well done. You've inhaled exactly 2.5 grams of mercury. You can find as much in two mercury thermometers if you breathe in their evaporated mercury when you inhale, just like you did right now. Or if you fill a small room with thermometers and trample them thoroughly, it will take you around one hour and 250,000 thermometers to breathe in the same dose of mercury and die. This is also mercury, hole. If you drink a glass of ordinary mercury, the maximum that can happen is you might get a severely upset stomach and diarrhea. But if the mercury is finely fragmented, you will die in pain. When ingested, tiny droplets form hazardous soluble salts. Your body temperature rises to 40 degrees Celsius. You begin to shiver, and your chest and stomach start ripping apart from pain. Also, don't forget to add extreme salivation, vomiting, and diarrhea to the mix. If we don't bump your stomach immediately, death will come after 10 to 30 excruciatingly painful days. The second part of the simulation, a virus has snuck in somehow. Don't move, Arnold. Do not move. Oops. Congratulations, Arnold. You're now in the Dashti Loot Desert in Iran. This is the hottest place on the planet. If I were you, I'd start conserving liquids. There are three million sweat glands in the human body, so you're gonna lose up to three liters of fluid per hour. And all the salts in your body are gonna get taken out of the liquids, and this is gonna cause spasms in your limbs. Arnold, don't jump in there! It's just a mirage. Hmm, I guess sometimes there really is some benefit to your stupidity. Okay, so now you're gonna get cold. Let's find out where you are. This ain't the best situation, buddy. You're in the village of Oymyakan, Yakutia. This is the coldest place on Earth. A temperature of minus 71.2 degrees Celsius was recorded here. Yikes! According to statistics, 140 people a year here die from hypothermia. Come on, get moving! The human body temperature is 36.6 degrees Celsius, but in cold like this, it'll drop. And how? Your body's gonna try to warm up, and it does this by shivering. Then your memory will start to go. And next, your mind. Although, for you, Arnold, that's pretty much your normal state. This will be followed by a full sense of warmth. Arnie, buddy, you really need to start stamping your feet or death is gonna get you. Come on, Arnold, you can do it. Great job, buddy. Where did he go? Taking a bath, are you? Imagine if a wave caught you not in the bathroom, but in the sea. The Black Sea is, in fact, also a large bathtub, just the size of 340,000 cubic miles. It would take about 243 million years to fill it up. The sudden movement of tectonic plates causes waves. The seabed rises several hundred meters, thereby creating the deadly tsunami waves. We're now located in Portugal, 
The highest waves in the world are formed here. It's like a cheetah, but in the world of waves, because its speed has already reached 60 miles per hour. One Hawaiian surfer caught a 79-foot wave here. For this, he got into the Guinness Book of Records. Have you ever heard of a killer wave? These are single waves around 80 to 100 feet high, which can't be seen even from a ship. They can appear suddenly and imperceptibly. Therefore, there's very little time to save a ship's crew. Killer waves can sink a ship in just one hit. Even Conor McGregor would envy such a knockout. The largest wave on record was formed in 1958 in the Lituya Bay in Alaska. The wave reached 100 feet in height and covered the mountains approaching the bay. As a result, all vegetation up to an altitude of 1,700 feet above sea level was destroyed. And this is the height of five and a half Statues of Liberty. On a shore, nature itself will hint at the approach of a tsunami. Animals feel the disaster coming and begin to rush somewhere in a hurry or behave strangely. Birds form flocks and fly away. If on land, get in a car. On a bike, run. Ask King Kong to give you a lift at the very least. It's advised to get to a height of 120 <gasps> feet above sea level. Arnold, you better get to the top floor of the Empire State Building. The skyscraper's height is 102 floors, or 922 feet. The elevator goes up at a speed of 700 feet per minute, so you definitely have time. Oh, well, that's also possible. Don't shout underwater, otherwise you'll choke. Keep yourself conscious by any means. Arnold, hide! These are the neighbors from below. You're drowning them. Well, that's it. I've got to go. And you'll figure everything out by yourselves. <gasps> are you surprised you're the only passenger on board? This Boeing 767 belongs to the most dangerous airline in the world. <laughs> right after the company was founded in 2003, one of its aircraft went off the runway during landing. Passengers received many injuries, but fortunately all survived. Yeah. Then, again, after some time, one of its planes disappeared from radar half an hour before landing. After two days of searching, it was found, crashed into a mountain, and out of 104 people on board, only microbes survived. Rule number one on a plane, always buckle up. Air density is constantly changing. Imagine this, it's summer. You're flying over a field with a warm breeze blowing up at the plane. Then suddenly the field ends and you start flying over a cold lake. The warm winds suddenly stop influencing the plane and you start going wee! Turbulence will shake the plane and can knock it down by three meters. And all of this is happening at a speed of 800 kilometers an hour. And if you're not buckled up during a sudden 2G load, you're a goner. Every single collision with your seat or the plane will break your ribs, twist your arms, break your skull, and then, holy shit. Rarefied gas, which flies out of the engine, attracts lightning more strongly than anything on land. But the most interesting thing is that large planes often create lightning themselves. From the tail, an electrical discharge of hundreds of thousands of amps extends into the clouds, and from the nose into the ground. Lightning can break the windshield and disable all the electronics on board. Hold on, Arnold. Ladies, you could have worse than the double on your hands and Oh my god, Arnold. If you touch the wheelchair one last time. Is it really happening? Arnold, are you getting married? The world was consumed by a new epidemic. The infected have spots on their skin. A terrible rash covers their entire face. They cough continuously and their front teeth fall out. And in order not to be isolated, people are inoculating en masse by buying the vaccine on the black market, deliberately putting themselves at risk as the vaccine has not yet been approved. But they do this so they can return to normal life as soon as possible. Arnold, what are you doing here? Oh, are you on a date? That's cool, but you sure could find a place more romantic than this cafe on the outskirts of the city. 
Here she is. Wow! What did you tell her to get her to come on a date with you? Uh-oh. How did so many zombies get in here? Arnold, it seems that Susie is in trouble. An average zombie. It has green skin and smells like my grandmother's feet. At first glance, it may seem that this is just your ordinary gamer who hasn't eaten for three days. But no, zombies have their own diet. Usually, these cute creatures eat human brains. Arnold, what are you gonna do? Wow, no, that, that, that's what I call a gun. Who is that? Wow, no way, that's Chuck freaking Norris. And he's got an entire arsenal here. Now he's gonna kick some butt. Yikes, this is kind of brutal even by my low standards, but very cool. Blimey, how many zombies are there? Looks like this big guy is the only one left. You call that a punch, this is is a punch. Your date seems to have been canceled due to the unforeseen zombie attack. Arnold, don't forget about Susie. Crikey, are they immortal? Chuck, hit the gas. Huh, that went pretty okay. Oh no. Look, Arnie, you and Susie have something in common. Just like you, she loses her fingers. Hmm, it seems she's getting worse. Quick, do something. You guys gotta save her. So this is the guy can help us. Who the heck is he anyway? Grigory Rasputin, the most mysterious person of the 20th century. He's credited with hypnotic abilities and an extraordinary gift of healing. What a creepy place. Even worse than that cafe you invited Susie to, Arnold. What are we doing here? Where are we going? This is how I imagine the dentist office. 100% dreadful. Hey, can we maybe stop before it's too late? Here, everything is in the best traditions of Russian celebrations. Vodka, balalaika, bears, and dancing till morning. And here's the guy we need, Grigory Rasputin. This here's the big guy. It seems our healer has drunk an 80-proof potion. Looks like you're gonna have to figure things out on your own. You don't need to worry about him. Everyone is talking about the new vaccine. Many have already tried it out on themselves, but it turns out it has a side effect. People turn into zombies. This Rasputin guy turned out to be a real you necromancer. He took advantage of the situation and invented a vaccine that destroys the virus, but turns the living into zombies. Even Chuck is shocked. Chuck, your turn. Gosh darn it, how does he do it? He's even cooler than in Walker, Texas Ranger. So that's who Van Damme took lessons from. Ooh, here comes Daddy. This big guy is not gonna be taken down so easily. Army, you're the only one left. Army, you are a warrior. Remember all the things I taught you. And most importantly, remember, there's no enemy like yourself. Arnold, are you? I knew it. Goodbye, Arnold. You were a nice guy. Ooh, now I see. What a twist. Arnold, I congratulate you. Now that you're finally getting married, though to a zombie. Although, you're a zombie yourself. But what's the difference? Even zombies can love too. Right in front of you is the new generation of the DeLorean. I've upgraded this Tesla so you can now travel not only to another city, but also to another year. 1986, for example. It worked! We're at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant just a few minutes before the disaster. Arnold, bring the camera. You're going to shoot the explosion on it, and I'll post the video on YouTube. I'd say at least 20 million views are guaranteed. Hmm, is the battery already dead? Put it on charge. It's a European outlet, doof knuckle. You need an adapter. Or I guess not already. So, it's all because of you. It doesn't matter. You need to get out of here fast. There's a power bank in the glove box. Plug it into the car. Damn it, it takes at least 60 seconds to charge. Get out the protective suit. Just by looking at the area, you'd never know that you're in a radiation zone. 
But in fact, the radiation here is cosmic. That's not quite what I expected. Maybe you swapped bags with someone. With radiation above 500 rentgens, your hair and nails fall out instantly. Your skin turns red, and all those diseases you've got get worse. But you're lucky, Arnold. You won't feel much pain because you'll fall into a coma in three, two... Oh, you're already out. This is due to the fact that the radiation here is 20,000 rentgens per hour, and this technology can't handle that onslaught. The battery should be enough to get you back to the year 2020. Go!